All right, so we uh, we recently had a chance to play Chapter 1, Session 1 of the story that I'm calling the Apotheosis Stone. It is an 18th level Dungeons & Dragons 5th edition uh, story that takes place six months before the events of the Tomb of Annihilation. Uh, the campaign is uh, beginning at 18th level and is uh, going to progress to at least 20th level, if not beyond. So um, the playing characters were contacted by the Triceratops uh, Society and were, uh, were asked by a powerful wizard named Cindra Sylvain to travel to Cholt to uh, help her in mounting an expedition to a mysterious uh, floating citadel that appeared off the coast of the dark continent of Cholt recently. They believe that it is a legendary warehouse of the gods that is called Castle Atticos. And they believe that there may be some artifacts within the castle that may be able to help with the mysterious death curse that is spreading throughout Chult. So the plant characters have their uh, passage paid for on a ship called the Lucille and they also have the room and board paid for at an inn called the Thundering Lizard in Port Nyanzaru. So the plant characters board the Lucille. The uh, trip is uneventful except for about halfway they rendezvous with their sister ship, the uh, Zhang He. The Zhang He is piloted by one of their former crew members who is a uh, Minotaur. And um, they have a discussion about uh, what's been going on. They, they talk about some uh, trade and some missions that they may be going on. They, they move some crates back and forth and specifically a passenger who is on the Zhang He who recently uh, disembarked from Cholt he gets off of the Zhang He and gets back onto the Lucille in order to travel back to Cholt which is kind of a strange decision uh, the Minotaur captain says that about a day out of Cholt uh, the man asked if he could possibly um, make his way back to Chalt because he had heard that they were rendezvousing with a sister ship that was on their way to back to Chalt. Um, so this was a this was kind of a strange thing that he would leave Chalt and then a few days later want to go back. Um, so the playing characters were made aware of that. Um, the character's name the uh, the name of the non-playing character who traded ships is named Xerxes. So they, uh, they paid a little bit of attention to Xerxes to see what his deal was, but Xerxes is a non-social kind of guy. He gives one-word answers, he doesn't want to hang out with people, he spends most of his time in his cabin, and when he does gather to, uh, to eat with the crew members and the other passengers, he devours his food quickly, says very little, and then returns to his cabin. So, of course, he is kind of mysterious and aloof and not very friendly. Um, so, the, the Lucille continues on and arrives in Port Nyanzaru. Um, the playing characters uh, get a chance to uh, explore the city a little bit. They go to the Harbor Masters, where they were instructed that they should go to... Uh, to get letters of credit to uh, stay at the Thundering Lizard. They meet the Harbor Master and a couple of dock workers. And they also meet a, uh, a gold half-dragon named Zindar. Um, it's uh, pretty apparent right away that Zindar isn't very well liked by the uh, dock workers. Um, and, it, and the playing characters find that he is not only muscle for the Harbor Master to keep the dock workers in line and to, uh, to keep order for the Harbor Master with uh, visitors and so forth, especially with uh, some of the influx of the adventurers that are coming because of the death curse have been coming to Cholt recently. But uh, he's also a pirate hunter. Um, he has made a living... Um, 
on the docks of Nyanzaru hunting wanted pirates. So that was uh, Zendar's story. So Zendar um, escorts them to the Thundering Lizard and uh, drops them off outside and explains that all they have to do is go in and show the, uh, the letters of, of credit that are from the Triceratops society and their room and board will be taken care of they won't have to worry about paying for anything and then they are instructed that when they are ready to they can meet with uh, Cindera Sylvain although she is um, ill and will not be able to meet with them until at least tomorrow morning because she's not feeling well so they're given directions and they're told at uh, essentially 7 a.m. they would be able to meet with uh, Cindera they can show up and a, uh, a butler essentially will escort them into where they need to go in Cindra's uh, house. So they, uh, they get ready to head into the inn and they happen to look back and they see that uh, two men in, in uh, heavy purple hooded cloaks have jumped out and are t uh, preparing to attack Zindar. Of course this is uh, this is odd because the uh, intense heat of uh, Chult would not lend itself to someone wearing heavy cloaks. So not only is it suspicious that they would be wearing these, uh, this heavy clothing but of course they're jumping out to attack a, uh, an associate of theirs. So Arland, of course, reacts uh, quickly, and he throws his javelin of lightning, which uh, pierces through one of the the cloaked men's uh, chest and kills him. And um, the others rush forward. There's some combat, and they manage to capture the other hooded man, who they uh, then take into the alley, and they discover that he is a pirate who uh, is upset and has been sent by his captain to, uh, to kill Zindar because Zindar recently put a, a bounty out on his captain's head. So um, Zindar thanks the playing characters for their help and um, takes the, the pirate into custody and says that there is a, uh, there's a, <clears throat> an award of 50 silver pieces that would be uh, awarded to them for the capture. Um, the playing characters say not to worry about it, um, to take the, uh, the silver pieces and have them uh, given to the poor. So Zendar is impressed by that and he takes the, uh, the pirate off to, uh, to be taken to prison and to the constables. And the playing characters then retire to the Thundering Lizard Inn. Um, they meet the barkeep, um, they meet a couple of the uh, children that are servants there, and they're escorted to their rooms, which are surprisingly better than, uh, to, than it seemed like they would be expected to be, because the Thundering Lizard Inn appears to be kind of a ramshackle uh, old tavern that they wouldn't expect to have fancy rooms, but uh, it turns out that each of their rooms which they each have private rooms, are actually uh, very nice on the inside um, and also include uh, samples of all the uh, native fare, uh, tige, uh, different kinds of food, um, different kinds of uh, drink, um, but mainly the tige, the, the fermented honey drink. So uh, the, the characters spend some time, they... Uh, they they are told that they will be having uh, dinner brought to them by the servant girl, Lindsay. Uh, Lindsay, on her way up, um, questions them, um, excited that they're, that he, she understands that they're from Waterdeep. So apparently there's been some discussion of where they're from and what they're doing in town. Um, Lindsay wants to know about Elminster and about water deep and she's very curious about these things so this not only tells the playing characters that there's been some discussion about them in the tavern especially with the the tavern owners but that um they know um that they're at least from water deep 
and that Lindsay is very curious about magic and about Elminster. So that's where I'll end the video for right now because uh, I want to keep them short. Uh, the next video, I'll talk about some of the other events that happened in session one. Thanks for watching.